So, we would continue with our discussion on the contemporary development in France. Uh, what I was uh, you know, trying to emphasize was that it was actually the need of the contemporary society at that time to uh, uh, work towards uh, the identification of uh, towards the well being of people who were considered as feeble minded or mentally retarded. And therefore, uh, it was the intervention from the part at the part of the government okay, uh, that a commission was uh, you know, constituted, the commission requests uh, uh, Binet and Simon to be instrumental in developing a psychological tool. Okay. So, all I am trying to say is that had that need not been there in the contemporary society, had the government not become proactive at that time probably this major milestone would not have reached psychology at that point in time. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we will continue with the Bene Simon scale for some time. Okay. This uh, landmark uh, know, assessment tool okay, uh, was once again, uh, know, you know that in 1905 this came. In 1905, Bene Simon when he came forward with his scale, it had 30 tests. Okay, I am just giving you uh, the sample uh, items here. For example, the first one was follows a moving object with the eye. Second item uh, grasps a small object which is touched. Item number 28 for example, uh, reverses the hands of a clock. Item number 29, after paper folding and cutting draws the form of the resulting holes. Now, interestingly, Bene Simon scale did serve the purpose of assessment of severe mentally retarded to high level of gifted children. Okay. But an important thing needs to be uh, looked at that Bene Simon did not give the method of uh, computing the total score. Okay. So, that is an interesting thing. Usually, in psychological measures, you finally have a total score. So, that was not provided. And just three years later, 1908. Bene Simon revised their scale. So, now instead of 30, the revised version had 58 tests. They also introduced the concept of mental level okay. and of course, a scoring method was also proposed. So, that way it is again another milestone towards making psychology a scientific discipline. It is not only assessment, okay. it is actually testing the mental level of uh, the participant and it is also about the method of scoring a particular psychological tool. So, this is an interesting development that in that way. In 1911, the third version of the Bene Simon scale came and now instead of uh, being useful only for children, now the scale was extended to the adult age range also okay. and a new method of scoring was introduced. Uh, unfortunately, Bene died in that year. Okay, so, 1911, uh, but then just the following year that is 1912, Stern suggested uh, the concept of computation of IQ okay, by dividing the mental age by the chronological age. Okay. And in 1916, uh, Bene Simon scale was further revised at Stanford University by Terman and his associates. Okay. And now, the present formula was provided okay. and this formula was what is being used now, where you have uh, M A upon C A into 100. So, that was the technique that came forward at that time. But what is interesting to know is 1905, uh, Bine and Simon comes forward with his test. And if you look at uh, you know, the revision that has taken place, the latest revision of the Stanford Bine test was done in 2003. So, that is an interesting development you can see. Another development that took place in US, uh, right now, till now uh, no, we were talking about uh, how uh, from France uh, this whole uh, no, uh, test moved to the US. Another interesting development that took place in the US was that in 1906, the Wineland Training School in New Jersey, they asked Goddard to study classification and education of feeble minded children. And Goddard, his reference point was the Bene and Simon scale uh, that was developed in 1908, 1905 and then the first revision. So, that was the reference point for Goddard. 
what was interesting was that uh, to suit the need of the Vineland uh, uh, training school, okay, the original French scale was translated into English. Okay. So, translation and in 1910, okay, when Godard was further asked by the departments of immigration uh, to examine the immigrants in the Ellis Island. Okay, this uh, no original French test, which was translated into English, was further translated into Yiddish, Hungarian, Italian, Russian, okay, and other uh, languages. No, but what was very interesting to note was that you have a French test. The test is translated into English. The test is translated into a few more languages to suit the need of uh, the Ellis Island. But the reference that was used for uh, interpretation, no, the norm, okay, that was still the French norm. Okay. So, technically speaking, when you look at uh, no, uh, uh, scales, where uh, no, you have uh, certain norms on the basis of which you interpret your raw score, okay, you realize that uh, no, although in terms of development of scale, psychology had made a, made a big jump. In terms of translation, yes, a very uh, no, big change had come into being, but in terms of adaptation of the test, this was still an issue. Okay. And which norm to be used, technically speaking, was still a question where psychology was lagging behind. Now, uh, let me make an attempt to connect the past to the present. Many psychologists felt uh, the need for a non-verbal test. Okay. And uh, I am sure many of you must have seen the Swigin form board uh, in your labs, okay, uh, where actually there were impressions, where 10 different blocks can be fitted. On your screen, you can see okay, different, different uh, forms are there okay, and these were the impressions, where blocks can be fitted. Now, Swigin uh, form board test was actually not developed as a test, rather it was simply developed to train people with mental retardation, the children with mental retardation. But then Godard, who was uh, no, actually working with uh, feeble mindedness, who had used a 1908 version of the Binet Simon scale, who was also in instrumental in translating it into multiple languages, because of the need of the immigrants at the Ellis Island. He uh, no, developed Seguin form board in the form of a test. And then a uh, little later, it was Sylvester who standardized it in 1913. Okay. So, even non-verbal test, test of performance, you realize that standardization of such tests also started taking place in psychology. Okay. Now, Seguin form board test, you will find in most of the labs. Okay. All schools uh, uniformly, even till date, if you uh, visit the uh, especially schools for uh, the mentally retarded children with uh, uh, autism, children with CP, you would realize that these tests are being used. Interestingly, if you refer to uh, the development in uh, neuropsychology and if you look at the Halstead Wright and neuropsychological battery, okay, uh, which actually makes an attempt uh, know, to localize the neurological damage, you can identify using this test. Okay. Now, of the 10 subtests uh, of the Halstead Wright and neuropsychological battery, you find tactual performance test. And on your screen, you see how much resemblance is there between the Seguin form board test and the tactual performance test of Halstead Wright and neuropsychological battery. So, you find that past and present, they both exist together okay, and the heavy influence of the past and the present. Now, after uh, no Goddard's work in the Ellis Island, it was Knox who developed several performance tests for the Ellis Island immigrants. Okay. And of these tests, okay, there were uh, wooden puzzles and digit symbol substitution tests. Now, you find uh, no, that these two things are still available when you look at the Wechsler's adult intelligence scale. Okay. So, Wechsler's intelligence scales, which is a recent development in certain sense, uh, that it is uh, you know with all those revisions, uh, it is one of the widely used tests in psychology. You can again relate it that Goddard's work, okay, uh, Ellis Island, 
form board okay then uh, wooden puzzles digit substitution test and then how you can again uh, link it to the bachelor's intelligence skills another interesting thing was that uh, pinter and peterson they developed a 15 performance tests okay comprising of the form boards puzzles and object assembly tests okay you all know uh, coast block design test okay uh, you also know uh, that uh, in psychology we do use the maze tests okay now uh, stanley porteous he did develop the maze test in 1915 coast block uh, test was developed in 1920 okay uh, pintner and peterson okay they developed their 15 uh, part performance test in 1917 okay and you find that coast block test the maze test they are still available in psychology they are still being used okay the new tests uh, of course in psychology that you find they are always validated with respect to their correlation with the, uh, these tests that we have referred to okay and this way you find a strong bond between the past and the present in terms of uh, techniques in terms of uh, tools and in terms of standardization of their psychological tools we go back to the us pile gets the credit for developing the first group test in 1913 okay now remember that uh, uh, no 1905 when the first formal test came into being a big jump okay uh, that was supposed to be administered to a single individual and now comes in 1913 the group test now the battery consisted of memory span digit symbol substitution and oral word association Pintner revised Pile's battery and added the time cancellation test. If you go back to Europe, okay, there was again an attempt, uh, know, in terms of a developing projective approach towards uh, psychological assessment, and the famous word association test came into being. Again, word association test that we see, okay, uh, is the contribution of uh, Carl Gustav Jung. Uh, but then you can trace it back to Francis Galton, who uh, was uh, know, instrumental giving this concept and then uh, Wundt and Kreplin, who uh, further evolved this very uh, concept and then uh, Jung in Sweden finally came forward with it in 1910 and the same year the word association test was taken back to the US by uh, Kent and uh, Kosanov. But Meanwhile, a big change took place uh, in the history of humankind. In 1917, US entered World War I and they had 1.75 million recruits. One of the psychologists, Robert Yerkes, he convinced the US government that they should administer intelligence tests to all the recruits and the purpose was very simple that uh, no, on the basis of their performance on the intelligence test these recruits, uh, recruits can be classified and they can be assigned certain specific tasks the government was convinced and you would be uh, amazed to know that yerks uh, finally was uh, uh, you know, included in the armed forces uh, at the rank of colonel okay so he joined the armed forces and he constituted a committee and interestingly the members of his committee included goddard and terman both of them had already established their credentials by that time in psychological assessment. Now, the outcome of uh, no, this exercise of Yerkes was the popularly called army alpha and army beta test. No? Now, army alpha had 8 verbal tests for average and high functional personnel, which included following oral directions, uh, arithmetic reasoning, practical uh, judgment, synonym antonym pairs disarranged sentences, number series completion, analogies and information. Whereas, army beta was a non-verbal test for illiterates and non-English speaking personnel and it largely included uh, visual perceptual test and motor tests. Now, army alpha and army beta was a big jump uh, know, in some sense uh, in the area of test construction. By this time, psychologists had proven to various governments in France and in uh, US both the places repeatedly psychologists succeeded convincing the society and the government that they can be of 
importance okay they can serve the basic purpose that is actually needed at their uh, time contemporary need of the society contemporary need of the government okay with all due scientific rigor okay it can be achieved so this was that way you know a big jump the end of the world war 1 so interesting demand in the area of industry and education both now group testing in the army influenced the national research council which was a government organization of scientists to develop the national intelligence test and interestingly the national intelligence test was administered to 7 million children in the us during the 1920s it also influenced the development of Bessler's intelligence scale, scholastic aptitude test and the popular graduate record exam, the GRE. For the purpose of uh, testing college applicants who were interested uh, getting admissions, college, college entrance examination board CEEB was also established and CEEB was in, instrumental in the development, standardization and validation of the test that you see right now such as the graduate record examination the law school admission test and the peace corps entrance tests. Group testing in the army also influenced the development of uh, Wechsler's intelligence scale and the scholastic aptitude test. Okay, you find thrice Wechsler intelligence scale has been referred. No? Uh, so, you can see how development uh, no, is gradually influencing successive developments in the time frame. Okay. Now, interesting developments started taking place in the 1930s machine scoring was introduced remember okay earlier you needed a psychologist to score okay now you have machine scoring coming back as early as 1930s okay and the major uh, change that took place uh, in the allied domains was that all these contemporary developments in psychology started challenging the statisticians so, many many new techniques in statistics developed and one of the major important developments that took place was the emergence of factor analysis as a technique. Okay. From US we now again go back to Europe uh, where uh, Hermann Rorschach in Sweden came forward with the ink blot test which is now what is now popularly called Rorschach ink blot test and this test came uh, back as early as 1920. Similarly, no Morgan and Murray they came forward with uh, the popular test what is called as TAT okay, long back in 1935. Okay. Now, you go to any clinic, okay, clinical psychologist, psychiatrist and you would find uh, Herman Rocha's uh, ink blot test being used. Okay. Invariably in uh, many recruitment processes you find TAT being used. Okay not only for uh, the civil purposes even defense recruitment you know the set of psychological tests uh, that they use for recruitment okay there you find tat being used another uh, major milestone uh, i would say usually uh, it is uh, ignored when we talk about the history of psychology was uh, that you need a formal platform where uh, you no know, you will have these psychological assessment tools being made available to others. And again if you look back at the history you would realize that in 1921 Cattell, Thorndike and Woodworth all three prominent psychologists they founded the psychological corporation and this corporation was the first test publisher. Okay. Now of course, you have a large number of test publishers you also have large number of uh, you know, houses which are involved into it you remember in the beginning I told you that uh, although uh, testing was a timid business okay, uh, in the beginning it has become a big business now, okay, but you can again trace it back to 1921. We now come back to India okay, and uh, in this uh, no, uh, session I am primarily trying to conclude now uh, that although uh, no, all these developments primarily was centered either in Europe or in the US. Okay, although we uh, historically traced it back to uh, China, uh, but the major developments took place uh, only in Europe and US. But let me you know uh, share with you the developments that took place in India in 1922. Okay, remember 1905 was the time 
uh, that we are you know saying that this is the major milestone in psychology, uh, Vinay Simon skill coming into existence. 1922, Indian Psychoanalytic Society was uh, founded by uh, Green Shekhar Bose and this society in 1924 got affiliated to the International Psychoanalytic Society. Okay, all this is pre-independence. No? So, again of course, a big achievement in certain sense. As uh, you know, back as 1923, you find that in, the, in Indian Science Congress, psychology was included as a section. The first association that is the Indian Psychological Association was founded uh, long back in 1924 and the first Indian Journal of Psychology uh, came uh, in 1925. Okay. So, these are interesting development, no? year after year you know, one uh, significant change. Then 1938, Calcutta University started the Applied Psychology Wing and the same year you uh, find uh, that Jung, Myers and Spearman, all three of them came to India to attend the Silver Jubilee uh, session of the Indian Science Congress. Okay. So, that way you know, India could get connected to uh, the western uh, world. And in 1947, the year when India got independence was also the year when the second journal of psychology that is Samiksha that was published. Now, uh, post independence uh, you, know, you find two, three in interesting things that took place. 1947, we became independent, but independence was uh, you know, achieved at the cost of a mass influx of refugee because of the communal riot. In 1950, the Ministry of Education uh, hired the services of Gardiner Murphy to investigate the causes of uh, these communal violences and uh, several Indian collaborators uh, were there. And finally, uh, this work was published in the form of a book in 1953. The book was titled In the Minds of Men. You will find you know, uh, uh, long description of all this, no, right from Grinsaker Bose to the edited volume by uh, Gardiner Murphy uh, in the next talk, where uh, Professor Ajit Dalal would be talking about uh, all these historical developments at length. In 1950, the Ahmedabad Textile Industry Research Association (ATIRA) that was established. And very interestingly, you will find that Erickson and McClellan, they were the frequent visitors okay, to this institute. So, initially you found uh, know that Jung, Myers and Spearman coming to India to attend the Silver Jubilee uh, Congregation of the Indian Science Congress and again Erickson and McClellan, uh, you can uh, know find them in India. But one of the remarkable uh, know development that took place in India was this publication. The Psychology of Rumor, a study relating to the great Indian earthquake of 1934. Jadunath Prasad at uh, Patna okay, published this work in 1935 okay, in the British Journal of Psychology, volume 26, first issue. Okay. And uh, what he did was that he did the content analysis of the rumors that followed the major earthquake. And he found that most of these rumors Okay, uh, were actually anxiety inducing and this justified fear of the earthquake victims. What is very interesting to find that this very work of Jadunath Prasad okay, actually inspired the whole uh, know, conception of the idea of cognitive dissonance theory by Festinger. Okay. So, a very, very remarkable uh, theory in psychology, the cognitive dissonance theory. Okay, has its uh, root in India. And another interesting thing you will also find is uh, that the communication that took place between Eric Erickson and Mahatma Gandhi okay, and later on Erickson came forward with uh, this book Gandhi's Truth. Uh, primarily you will find uh, a rare piece, why? Because you have the psychoanalysis of a stalwart, the father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi and the socio-political process. And one of uh, the established uh, know, schools of thought in psychology, psychoanalysis. So, how psychoanalytic technique can be used to understand an individual and also a process. Okay. 
So, that is an interesting contribution that uh, India has made uh, to uh, psychology at large. Of course, we do not have the history uh, of uh, development uh, in India, the way we have talked about either in uh, France, in England, in Germany, okay, Sweden uh, and in the US. Okay. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, India has made uh, you know, certain progress in terms of uh, you know, developing these uh, psychological tools. And as you can see on your screen now, uh, you have the compilation of the psychological measures that are developed in India. The first handbook of psychological and social instruments, this is the title uh, by Uday Parikh and uh, Venkateshwar Rao. And then the second and the third handbooks. Okay, by uh, D. M. Pastanji. Okay, and here you find a large number of uh, psychological tools that are being talked about, and of course you will have to uh, know look at each of them with a certain pinch of salt because uh, uh, you would be looking at the standardization process, you would be looking at the norms, okay, you would be looking at uh, know their uh, reliability and validity scores, whether it is reported, whether it is not reported. Uh, how easily it is available and uh, issues like that still remains. Okay. And uh, of course, if you read the five surveys of research in psychology that has come forward, okay, there you have the important research contribution uh, since the beginning of the last century. So, how uh, research in psychology has progressed okay, right from the beginning okay, uh, till now you will find in these uh, five surveys of research in psychology. And as I was uh, telling you right in the beginning, that although it was dull and dry in the beginning, 20 years back that I experienced, I really you know found it extremely fascinating and I found it very, very relevant. And I thought, I uh, will no, uh, uh, put them together in a very brief period of time, uh, making a journey of 100 uh, years of emerging of a particular discipline uh, is extremely difficult, but I have tried in a small way uh, just to in a very, very compressed way just to talk to you okay, how uh, you can look at the rigor, the process, uh, certain uh, jerks, acceptance, rejection okay, that psychology has uh, gone through. But once again remember that it is the practical need of the society, either demanded by the society or stated through uh, the uh, government, which has uh, know, asked, which has demanded, which has uh, made the psychologist uh, know, develop techniques, tools, improvise on their uh, techniques. And unless and until know, we look at the historical context, it is very difficult to understand how strong the concept was how uh, no sound a small experiment was, okay. how robust development of a very, very small uh, instrument was okay. and what were the limitations. Okay. So, it is very important to look at these uh, things in the historical context. In the following lectures uh, by uh, Professor Ajit Alal, by uh, Professor Girishwar Mishra and by Professor G. V. P. Sina, we would be further you know, looking at uh, historical development at the Indian front.